So a couple weeks ago, me and my wife were uh, talking about the word black. And we're going through the dictionary, a few dictionaries actually, and looking up the term. And this is something we've done many times, many, many times before over the, uh, over the, um, the years. So it isn't something new, but for some reason, as we're going through it this time and just looking and talking about it, it occurred to me, this word is the absolute worst word that you can call somebody with the definitions that are attached to it. I said, wow, this thing is like, I don't know any other, other word. That's what I told her. I don't know any other word that you can call somebody that, that has such demeaning and derogatory meanings attached to it. And so what I want to do right now is I want to go through some of the meanings attached to the word black so you can kind of see like what is really being implied when you call yourself black or when you call somebody else black and so that you can you'll be able to think about it and kind of really come to terms on what was the intent and the underlying objective behind naming people this. So what we can start off doing is we can go into the dictionary and we'll start with the Edom Online dictionary. And this is referring to, like when you go in here, this goes into the etymology, the origins and the way that words have developed over time. So when we go to this, this website, and anyway, you can all go to it. It's, it's right here. It's um, it's available to go to and it's easily accessible if you have internet and, and I'm, I'm sure I mean if you're watching this you have internet so you type in the word black and then as we go through it and start looking at it we'll see that it says old English black absolutely dark absorbing all light of the color of soot or coal proto-germanic so it's giving kind of like the history on how, it, how where it came from and then you come down here a little bit and it says the usual Old English word for black was swart. So this was the usual word for it before it was really came about as being black. So when you go up to this word swart, we can go in here and kind of look at it and see what it's attached to. Old English swart is telling you right here that it means black or dark of the night clouds. Also figurative wicked right infamous so already we know that the word black has roots in the term wicked and when you think about the word wicked wicked is referring to somebody who is morally out of place so let's go back so we see that it's attached to the word black and now let's see if black itself still has that meaning so as we go through we read and we see it has other things in here that, that are related to it. But then when you come right here, okay, black was used of dark skinned people in old English. And these are the colonists who are doing this, to put this in context. Dark skinned people. Because we know, obviously we know, this is one thing that we have to really clearly understand, is that people who are labeled black don't have black skin, the actual color of black. Black itself, the color of black, and I should have said this earlier, black is a phenomenal color in itself. Actually, it's one of my favorite colors. So it's nothing wrong with the actual color black. That's not the, the issue here. And that's not the, the, the problem with the word. It's not the color itself. It's when you attack, it's the meanings that are attached to the word black when applied to other people who do not have a color that is actually black. That's when you know that the people who are the colonists who applied it and the intent behind it was to place a, a, a certain term on people to label them in a certain way. And then that's what we're finding out right now. When you look into the dictionary, it's telling you how they're labeling, in this instance, dark skinned people, who they classified as dark skinned people. Right? And we know that the people who would be called dark skinned people, the color of the skin is not black. You can look at your skin, I can look at mine, and we can see that it is a, a brown skin, right? And most people, I mean, when you look at it, some people, or many people may not recognize it, that they have 
brown skin, but it's something that you should be able to be understand and be familiar with because it's it's a key to understanding why you need to remove that label and and also understanding what it was intended to do by putting that label on somebody. So they took the term which was swart first and then re, and then it, and then it became black which was already before it was attached to black or people who are labeled black it was already situated and designated for being wicked. That's how they used the term in Old English. Black was synonymous with wicked. So let's keep going. The figurative sense often come from the notion without light. Moral or spiritual. Now look at that. Without light. Moral. Let's deal with the moral part. That's already saying the same thing that Swart was which was wicked. When you're someone who is morally without light, what that's doing is it's saying that the people who are attached to this label are someone who are do not have a the proper ability to be moral. And what you understand with the with, with what that label has done is it has once people have accepted that label and began to believe in that, as Richard B. Moore talks about in his book, uh, The Name Negro and its, uh, its Origin and Evil Use. When they start to become that and believe that, they start to become that. And this is what is like a major issue with having the term black. They start to believe it, then they start to become it. So now, when you talk about being morally without light, and you equate that to people who are dark skin or supposedly dark skin that's not how we call them in our in, in our um, culture but that's how the rest of most people are going to call them they call them dark skin is that now what how they see their world and see themselves as someone who is morally without light and this is not something that people see consciously they're not saying we we are the um, we don't have any light. It's an unconscious behavior that's taking place because they've accepted that label. And so when you see people labeled black doing things that coincide with this term or with this meaning, when you look at how what it's describing, when, you, when it's saying a black person, then you would see that it is accurately describing someone who has taken on that term and that label and they have embodied that definition of what it means so it's okay for black people to rap about killing people because why without light without morals it's okay for black people to to to, to um, have a culture that's uh, surrounded by degrading women why? Morally without light. Right? Became to believe that and then become that. It's okay for black people to be somewhere between 12 and 14% of a population here in the United States and do 50% of the murders. Why? Without light. Moral. Morally without light. So this is a a damaging word to call anybody black right here this is what it's associated with fierce terrible wicked we see it here from the late 14th century right so it's without light morally or spiritual now the spiritual part this is a a topic that we're not going to get into right now because this part I think people can understand the moral aspect of it, of, of the consequences of it. But the spiritual part, this is going to be the most difficult part to really be able to express and pass on the idea for, uh, for many people. is being spiritually without light. Because this is something that 
I should say it's a it's an understanding that's going to take a lot a lot a lot of study and understanding and thinking and conceptualizing in order to get across and this is going to be my biggest challenge on, on giving these keys out with the spiritual part because when they use religion they used it in a way to where it's very difficult to re to release yourself from the, the the trap that they set very very difficult so like I said, this is going to be my biggest challenge, but it's one thing that has to be done too. You have to get some light in order, in order to be freed and liberated from what has happened in the past. Right? You're going to have to get those keys. And it's going to be a challenge for many people. Some, some, some people who were not exposed to like the religion of the slaves or who have removed themselves out of there or maybe they have had parents that have removed themselves out of there then you're going to be in a, a much better space like my wife for example she was one who didn't have much religious exposure pre uh, pushed down her throat so it, it's not a, a much of a challenge it's easily under uh, easily understandable to get some light when it comes to the spiritual aspect but for the vast majority of, of people labeled black this is going to be a tremendous, tremendous, it's going to take a tremendous amount of effort. But it says without light, moral or spiritual. So if you're labeled that, if somebody's calling you that and they're saying you don't have any moral light or any spiritual light, I mean, you have to think about what, what that's saying. What is that saying? Calling someone immoral. Who do we call moral? And back up to this term wicked right here. Who do we call wicked? Wicked is somebody who would be classified as people who are like child molesters, rapists, thieves, murderers. These people are all classified as wicked. So it's like, what term could you possibly call somebody that's more of a of just a, 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 a taste of disgust than the term wicked? which is also black. The difference is black is so accustomed to being used, you forget that it has these undertones with it that come along with it. When, you, when you're attaching it to people, using it as an adjective to describe a trait or a characteristic or a culture or any of those type of things that aren't actually the color black. Right? What worse, can, what worse thing can you call somebody? We have to think about that. I don't know of any other word that jams and loads so much negativity in one in, in one word, in one sound. Black. It even has the sound to it. Let's think about that. Black. It's harsh. Rugged. It's rigid. Let's see if we can find some more on here. The Latin Niger. This is where you get the word N-I-G-G-E-R. And N-I-G-G-A also stem from that stuff too. Negro, these all come from this. Had many of the same figurative senses. Gloomy, unlucky, bad, wicked, malicious. So it's saying the Niger has many of the same meanings to it. Gloomy, unlucky. Isn't that something, a way that you can describe black people? Does that not match the, the typical... The typical life and experience of someone who is labeled black, unlucky, in the ghetto, poverty, single parent homes, friends getting killed, cousins getting killed, unlucky. This is what this is talking about. This is a spell. Understand this is a spell. We're talking about a spell that's being placed on people. That's what this is. And one of the worst spells, the worst spells that you can have attached to you. Bad. If you call something bad, I mean, come on. You keep telling a child that they're bad, they're bad, they're bad. What happens to that child when they grow up? They start to believe it, and then they say, okay, people already think I'm bad. I'm just going to be bad. Same thing with blacks. Black folks have been told for so long, right? They ran propaganda campaigns on all this stuff to create in the collective unconsciousness of people 
these to attach these terms to a certain people or a certain uh, a group of people and then label them as black, right? And all these terms went into that. Bad, wicked, malicious. You have to really see that. So I'm looking at this when we're going over it. I'm like, man, this is, um, this is a terrible thing, man. This is, this is really a trap. This is a trap. Right, this is a trap. It's a masterful trap too, man. As every time I keep going through it and look at it, I said, man, these guys did a masterful job at doing what it was that they intended to do, which was to create. You gotta remember, they're creating a perpetual slave when they're when they're doing this. And what names and labels are one of the ways that you do that, along with religion and other things too. But these are powerful things that you can, powerful tools that you can use to place on people and to, to basically hijack their way of thinking and to where they see the world through that lens. And when they see the world through that lens, they begin to act that way. Then, therefore, you have accomplished your mission. So this is some, it's some powerful stuff, man. It's some powerful, very powerful stuff when you really start getting to the root of this stuff. Okay, here, it has been, okay, in English it has been the color of sin and sorrow at least since the 1300s, the 13th century. The color of sin and sorrow. Sin is another word for just wickedness. Evil and wickedness. What other word can you call somebody that's worse than this? What other word? I don't know of another word. So this is in one different uh, dictionary. The thing is, we can go over to just a, I mean, any dictionary. You can pop out if you have a dictionary at the home. Go up and look at look at black, and it'll tell you because it wasn't hidden. It's not a hidden thing. It's a it's an obvious and open thing. So we can go into let's see, dictionary.com. Let's come to dictionary.com, and let's see what it says. So this is dictionary.com. Being a color that lacks hue, brightness, and absorbs light without reflecting any rays composing it. So this is the actual color black, which we have nothing, nothing wrong with that. Black is a great color, like I said. The color of it is. It's not nothing wrong with the color. It's the things that were attached to it to describe people. Being wicked doesn't have anything to do with the actual color of black. That's, these are other attachments that they labeled on it. Now look where, Now this is important here. So you can kind of really get a fully a full understanding for what this the word black is associated with. So we have right here other words for black. Other words, things that you can use to replace black. So the first section here, this is the actual color. You have dirty and dingy. This is the part I want to focus on right here. It's four sad so you can replace sad with black depressing you can replace depressing with black somber doleful mournful all these can be replaced with the word black now watch this disastrous calamitous right so if a certain disastrous event happens you can call that a black event and they did used to call those things that that's how the word is built up here we go sinful we talked about that inhuman now you have to think about this did they not attach or say that the people that were captured and labeled black did, is that not the campaign that they ran they ran campaigns to try to show people that these people are inhuman they are subhuman less than human that's why they attached black to there you got to understand someone who's colonizing is coming in with a strategy, a strategy to take other people down. They're not coming in and just letting th this stuff is, de is deliberate is the point. They're not coming in and just saying, well, let's just see what happens. That's why they when they did that and they removed the, the, the tribal names from the people because the tribal people, tribal Africans or before they were captured, never called themselves. They weren't referring to themselves as black. And most of the continent still doesn't to this day they don't refer to themselves as black it's only when people go over there pushing that ideology over to them 
and then passing that 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 black virus over there to them then they tar- start taking that on but they weren't calling themselves that but this is the strategy of the colonists and it's a brilliant strategy it is a phenomenal strategy understand that it's a phenomenal strategy how do we know it is because it's still working to this day so what worse can you call some somebody than black which also means inhuman a subhuman person that's what's attached to this other words for black you see it fiendish fiendish also means let me see i think this is the word that means um wicked oh here it is fiendish it means extremely cruel or unpleasant devilish that's another word for black you got to think about it infernal monstrous here we go atrocious horrible nefarious treacherous traitorous villainous these are all words for black they mean the same thing they can be interchanged they're synonyms they can be interchanged and they can all mean that and these words the concepts are built up in the collective unconscious of people it's not like people are walking around saying black means devil black means sinful it's in the unconscious because if we use these words subtly it's subtly pushed in into the language that we use right you'll call um there's as a matter of fact there's in a book that he tells a story this is in a Brian Tracy book he tells a story about a guy who has one on one shoulder he has a white angel and he has on the other shoulder he has a black angel or a black devil or a black demon and both of them are talking to to the person and he's like which one of these do you think this person listens to the black devil's telling him how he you know this person cannot do something you know it's basically telling him all the negative things the white angel is telling him all the 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 uh the the things that he can become and and the positive things which one of these angels or demons does the the uh person listen to and he says the one that you feed basically the ones that you that's the one who you who you basically obey is the one that you listen to and the one that you receive the advice from but it's little stories like that that are crept into the unconsciousness of people which has these meanings in there and they don't they they it's there in the back parts of their mind and it's in everybody's minds right so let's go over to Marian Webster dictionary. We can look at here and see what is related to the word black. And you can see like how how just how Here we go again. They're not hiding it. Old fashioned, being thoroughly sinister or evil, wicked. Now this has nothing to do with this is black. Let me see. My hairs right here are black. You can't describe evil or wicked to the black hairs on here because it doesn't make any sense these are characteristics and traits that you describe a person as or a event as something that has taken place evil or sinister or wicked that's a wicked thing that you just did that's a evil thing that you just did that person over there across the street is an evil person that's a wicked person In other words, suddenly what there's that's a black person. Right? That's what this is saying. That's what it's saying. And that's why it's attached to black. Here we go. So this is one of the worst this is the actually this is the worst word that you can call somebody. Connected with or invoking the supernaturally, the supernatural and especially the devil. Especially the devil. That's what this is talking about. And this is talking about black magic. It's not black magic isn't a color magic. It's a specific type of magic that they will designate as being evil or wicked. It's a wicked type of magic is what it's saying. You need when you're doing a magic and you're creating ideas to harm people or getting people to try to do trying to get people to do what you want them to do against their wishes, that's a black magic. What when we look at it now, we would consider what the colonists did as doing black magic. Taking people 
stripping names away, putting labels on them, making them, uh, creating an environment to where they become that label that you placed on them in order to serve a purpose that the colonists had in mind, to be a perpetual slave. That's black magic. To them at that time, they wouldn't consider that as black magic because they thought they were doing a, a, a service of God, what they deemed to be God. And in their mind, rightfully so, in their own mind, right? We're not arguing the ethics behind it on how they felt about it because they felt the way they felt. They did what they did. There's, it can't be undone. But what can be done is from now forward, it, it can be changed. But what they did was what they did, right? And they had a strategy. That means you need a strategy to get out of there because it's not going to just unfold. You need a strategy to get out of there. Believe me, you do. Very sad. Gloomy or calamitous. Very sad. Here it goes. Black despair. Is that how... Is this a reality of many black people? Very sad. Feeling like there's no hope. Depressed. That is. Right? You begin to believe it. Then you, be, you become it. Gloomy. Calamitous. You got to think about this. What? I mean, come on. What words could you use that are worse than this? Distorted or darkened by anger. His face was black with rage. He's not talking about a color. This is describing a certain scenario, like a, a certain vibe that he had being black with rage. That means that, that means you know that this person here is like almost in the zone of getting ready to strangle or kill somebody. Was, if somebody describes it as black with rage, that means that something get serious is, is getting ready to happen. Right? And so now, being descendants and having some ancestry attached to people who were labeled black, as we come into the, the, the times of today where we have unlimited access to, to uh, resources and information, you can... You can and the playing field is now equal. That's another important part. We, the, the framework is now equal. The laws are equal. You have the ability to redefine yourself and to remove labels. That's the work that has to be done going forward. Because if you stay stuck in this, in this particular type of uh, dilemma, then you will continue to reinforce and perpetuate the intended objective of the, co uh, the, the colonial powers. And then you'll, you'll create slaves out of your own children. And you'll create a certain mindset out of your own children. So that's what we had re realized is that not only us who have to re re uh, remove ourselves from this type of thinking, it's also going to have to be white people as well. People who are labeled as white. And what, that, this is going to be a totally different dis discussion about white people. But right now we're dealing with the people labeled black. But essentially what, we ha what has to happen is a, it needs to be removed. All these terms have to be removed off of people in order to create a, a world that does not have people labeled as a permanent underclass. And it starts with you're going to have to do it yourself, starting with your own self, because nobody has the, the incentive really to do it. The only people who have the incentive, the real incentive to do it, are the people who are labeled as black. So you have to be the ones to do that first in order to be a beacon of light. And other people could then begin to fall in as well. And it needs to be a raceless society where you're not going off of the skin color because you can never win that that you can never win that game if you try to play the race game. That's a game you will forever lose because it's set up to make people who labeled black the losers by default. It's like going against the casino in Vegas. You're going to lose. So you have to remove that, but then not to have anger. This is the part where you have to get to is to not have anger and resentment for other people that didn't have anything to do with it, with any of this, right? Who, who have, were born into a 
society that may have given them benefits or perceived benefits, I should say. Right? You have to get to that point within your own self where you can look at the information and be objective with it and just say like, oh, wow, these people did what they did. The colonists did what they did. Right? And now we do what we do by saying, uh-oh, I see the strategy. I see the traps. Black is a trap. Religion is a trap. That's another major trap. Remove ourselves from that and say no thank you. Right, because being attached to this word black, it's a it's a losing game. All right, it's a losing game. It's a lose lose situation. So, um, hopefully, that has given some understanding on why this is the, the absolute worst word that you can call somebody or even call yourself, and then it gives you something to think about, something to think about, something to, to really meditate on, contemplate, and really see if you can come to terms with it. You know, it's just something that a lot of people hold on to dearly, and they'll fight to the death to, to keep this. And that's what the intent was, right? When you see that circle, going in the circle and doing that, then you'll know. They, then you really recognize, man, they really did a really good job, the colonists, on creating this world and, and, and hijacking the minds of people to where they hold on to being identified as a slave. Right, and they resist. And that's still for at least the next few centuries, that's going to be the thing. That'll be the case. But for groups of us, that will not be the case. On all sides, all different, coming from different backgrounds, will relinquish that racial ideology and move into a different, uh, um, a different way of seeing things. That's beneficial to everyone and where you can judge, really judge people off of how they behave. And do we align with values and standards and morals versus you have a, a skin color? That's a setup. And we, we're going to go heavy into that. I'm gonna, we, we'll find out more about the setup and how white people lost. They got tricked too. And we'll find out exactly who's, who's really benefiting from this thing. And it'll be a surprise. But as far as this right now, this is black. And this is the worst word that you can call yourself.